The principle of teleportation in Newton for After Effects is that an object defined as teleportable will, upon contact with or passage through another object defined as a portal, teleport to another location. This can be either the initial position of this object or the position of another object. There are also a number of options. For example, you can maintain the speed of the object being teleported or rotation, or if you like, you can also impart a force to this object when it exits this portal. I've got my object here, which is my box, and I want it to go through this portal and come out through this other portal. In the interests of efficiency, I've created a keyboard shortcut to Newton in the composition menu. So I launch Newton, and here's my scene. First of all, I don't need my background, so what I'm going to do is neutralize it. To do this, I'll go to my object type and choose dead, or the keyboard shortcut is E, then I'll hide it like this. It'll go right out of my simulation. Next, I have my object, my cube. It's a square, so we don't need all these details. All I need is an external representation. So I'm going to use the use convex hull function. This way, I'll limit the number of details, and my simulation will be much smoother. Finally, I've got my two portals. I'm going to set them to static because they won't move. That's it. So first, I want to drop my object through this portal here. And I want it to come out through this portal. So I'm just going to add a floor to catch my object once it's dropped. So I'm going to move my cube. I'm going to put in a little stronger gravity. I'll also, and this is quite important, always work with a slightly higher sub-step. I also need to activate teleportation on my object. So go to Advanced on Teleportation and activate teleportation. I need to give the destination of this object. Its destination is this portal. What I can do is use the eyedropper and click on it. And that's it for now. And I need to define this object as a portal. So I activate the portal on this object, then we'll see what happens. And nothing happens, so why doesn't anything happen? It's because my object needs to pass completely through my portal in order to be teleported. But right now, as you can see, it's blocked. It hasn't completely crossed my portal, so it's not being teleported. So what I'm going to do is simply move my portal up a bit and run the simulation again. And there it was indeed teleported. However, there's another problem. My object is sticking to my portal. Why is that? Because these two objects are in the same collision group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object and I'm going to switch it to dead. Let's see what happens. There, I've done my first teleportation. So now I'd like to do something a little more complex. I'd like this teleportation, my object, instead of descending, and bounce off the ground and then go through my portal and come out this way. So I'm going to select my object. I'll give it an initial velocity. Maybe I'll lower my portal back down. And then I'll launch my preview. Then it gets stuck here. Why does it do that? Because I need to put in a little extra rotation. You can see that my object has passed through my portal. So my object passes through my portal and goes to the other side. You can see that my movement is repeated all the time. Simply because once it's teleported, I reapply, if you look at my options here, the velocity is initial and the rotation is initial too. In other words, every time it's teleported, Newton will reapply these forces to my object. But what I'd like is for it to retain the rotation and velocity it had when it entered my portal. So to do that, I can go to velocity and set it to current. And we'll see what happens. As you can see, the result is no longer the same. My object retains the speed and rotation it had when it entered the portal. It retains it when it leaves the portal. That was the basis of teleportation.
Maybe we can do a little rendering on 150 frames. See what it looks like. So now I have a new composition called Sims 1. And I can do a preview. And I've got what I had in Newton. That's the first part of teleportation. We'll meet again for the second part. One, two, three, four. So in this second part on teleportation in Newton, we're going to talk about the looping word function. What is the looping words function? It's about using the limits of our composition to loop our world. For example, an object that passes to the right of my composition exits the composition's boundaries from the right, enters from the left, and eventually continue its trajectory and rotation. In the same way, if this object is going to pass through the lower limit of my composition, it will reappear at the top. Let's take a look at a practical case, Avalanche, which you'll find in Newton 4's sample browser. So let's launch Newton. I'm going to select them with the C key since they all have the same color. All my objects that are supposed to be static, here are these bars. Then press the S key to make them static. And I'll increase the gravity. And of course, as usual, I'm going to add more substeps. Now let's see what happens if I press preview. Nothing new here. All my objects fall naturally and cross the limits of my composition. If I want to stop them, I can simply put walls at the sides and then at the bottom. And now if I preview again, my objects stay inside the composition. But what I want to do is make these objects loop. In other words, those that fall to the bottom go back to the top, and those that go to the right reappear on the left. As a reminder, to activate teleportation, you need to select objects. So here, all the objects in this orange color I'll go to Advanced Smart Teleportation and activate teleportation. Now I want these objects to loop. To use Looping World, go to the Comp Walls Preferences, then activate the portals bottom left and right. Then select Looping World and not From Body. Validate and let's see what happens. So now we can see that when my objects cross the lower limit, for example, they reappear at the top. But as in the example I showed earlier, they leave with their initial velocity, whereas here we'd like them to keep their velocity, the velocity they have when they cross my limits. So I select them again and go to Velocity. I'll choose Current and the same for Rotation. Let's see what happens. You can see that my objects move when they cross the boundaries of my composition and regain their velocity when teleported. I'm going to render 500 images and we'll see what it looks like in After Effects. My simulation appeared in my project window, so I can do a preview and you can see that my objects loop within the limits of my composition. We meet again for the third part of our discovery of teleportation in Newton. One, two, three, four. So in this new scene, I'm going to apply forces to my teleported object. They could be teleported objects. Right now, I've only got one. So the principle is that I've got a cannon, and I'd like this cannon to fire this cannonball. And I'd like that cannonball to destroy the wall that's going to be built, and even rebuild itself as it goes along. So I've got a cannon. This cannon has a mask on it, it's just so you can see it in Newton. I've just put a representation with a triangle on this barrel. I put the anchor point of my cannon on this vertical segment of my triangle. And this is where my objects will reappear. My cannon is linked to a null object, which is animated in rotation with an expression, so the animation loops. So I can orientate my barrel differently each time. On my cannonball, I applied a circle instead of having all the details I don't need them. I just need its shape. And my bricks were quickly trimmed using After Effects Auto Trace function. So much for the scene. I also have some null objects called in and out. 
which will allow me to teleport my object. And finally, I've also got a layer that will serve as a support for my wall. So let's go into Newton to configure this scene. I'll launch Newton, take my background, and set it to dead because I don't need it. The shortcut is E, and then Alt-H to hide it. I want my cannonball to have the same animation as in After Effects. In this case, I need to set it to kinematic. And then I want this object, my support, to be static. And also, all these objects must be teleportable, so I'm going to set them to teleportable right away. I'm going to reduce the complexity of these objects by using the useConvexHull function. This is where things get a little more complicated, and we're going to take things one step at a time. What I want is for my cannonball. My cannonball is fired, it's going to jostle my objects here, and then it's going to fall here. And I want it to return to its original position every time it passes these walls. And it's the same with these objects. I'm already going to activate them in comp walls. I'm going to activate them in teleportation portal. The bottom and then to the right. But be careful, this time I'm not going to use looping world, I'm going to use from body. And I validate. So what happens if I press preview now? Well, my object comes back every time it's teleported to the same place. And if I take my boxes and drop them, you'll see it's exactly the same thing. They come back to the same place. So the destination of my object is my cannon. So I'm going to select them. And then in the teleportation, I'm going to set its destination. It's the cannon. For now, let's see what happens. If I press preview, then there are a few things. The first is that it doesn't exactly follow the movement of my cannon. Why isn't it? Because I have to tell it that its destination is current. And then it comes out in the right place. The other thing is that they're in the same collision group, so I have to separate them. So my cannon won't collide. In fact, it's not going to collide anything. And now it's teleported to the right place. And now I'm going to ask my cannon to give velocity to my cannonball. So I'm going to select my cannon. I'm going to go to general and I'm just going to give it an initial velocity. There's no direction yet. I just want it to go straight. And in my cannonball, I'll specify that it should take the linear velocity of my initial destination. Let's see what happens. I do have a cannon that fires cannonballs at my objects. It falls and they're teleported again. So maybe what we can do is take these objects and I'll bring them up a bit. My cannonball and my objects here have the same density. That's no good. My cannonball is supposed to be much denser than the other objects, so I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to put 20 in density like that. It'll really make my other objects move. So now I've got a cannonball. There's one flaw in this animation, and that's that it's very repetitive. Every time my cannonball passes this wall, it's retransported and these objects don't have time to land. So what we're going to do is make things a little more complex. We're going to take in and out and use the portal destination to make a little time loop. This will extend the time between when the cannonball is fired and when it passes my comp walls. We'll let it do another action to temporize before it gets back to my cannon. So as we're already doing here, but null objects are very small, so I'll go to the preferences. I'm going to increase the size of these null objects and then move them. I'm going to put them outside my composition, for example, here. So I'm going to take the out. I'm going to move it up for example, like this. So I'd like, once my cannonball has passed my comp walls, I want it to be teleported. Here on out, fall into in. And then, once it's fallen into in, I want it to be teleported and fired by my cannon. I'm going to change the destination of my object. It's no longer cannon. It's out. 
and I'll assign a destination to my portal. So now I can do portal destination, select and take my cannon. Let's see what happens. So it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because this object, my null object, is in dead. I'm going to have to switch it to static because if I don't switch it to static in dead, there's no collision. Newton has to detect the collision. So what's going on here? I just didn't activate the portal. So the rate of fire is much slower. So if we want, we can even go even higher up this object. This will slow down the rate of fire. What we can also do is, these objects here, we can give them a little more gravity with the gravity scale. And this object here, I don't want it to collide with my cannonball. I'm going to put it in group B, and my object here won't touch group B. Let's see what happens. I'm also going to increase my substeps. And you see, I've got a kind of animation loop here. I'm going to add even more gravity so that my objects descend even faster. I can also remove boosiness. I'll even cut the boosiness altogether. And now I've got my Canon animation, so of course we're going to render it. We'll render over 500 frames. So there you have it. With this teleportation function, I can temporize. I can send my object to different places. I can do a lot of things, create complex animations. Once again, if I'd wanted to do that with Newton 3, I'd have had to... No, in fact, it just wasn't possible. It allows us to create more complex animations with fewer layers. It's not beautiful. One, two, three, four. So let's get on with exploring the teleportation function. Here I have an airship that's doing an animation loop going around in the sky. And I'd like this airship to be able to drop these parcels. What object do I have? I have my airship. I've got boxes here. I have a background, and I also have another layer called air. Let's see how we're going to use it. I'm going to launch Newton with the F5 key. I'm going to take my two layers, background and air, and I'm going to put them in dead. Then I'm going to hide them. Now I'll take my airship and set it to kinematic. This will give it back the animation I defined for it in After Effects. I'll add a little more gravity and a little more, more sub-steps. So, these objects are only teleportable, and their destination is my blimp. We're going to take away the fact that my blimp collides with anyone else. and we'll see what happens. For the moment, nothing happens, quite simply because I need to set a floor that allows me to teleport my objects. So I'll go to the comp walls options. I'll check bottom, it'll be my portal, and it'll be a from body portal. And these objects won't collide with each other. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shift them, I'm going to put them one on top of the other. 
like this, they'll appear one after the other and I'll put them outside the composition. Why do I do that? Because if I only look at this, it'll look like this. So for the moment, my objects are teleported, but they're not teleported to the right place. Why aren't they? Because my destination is the initial destination, when it should be my object's current destination. Not bad. What we can see is that my airship is moving, but I'd like my objects to take on some of the airship's speed, some of the blimp's speed. I'll select my objects and go to Linear Velocity and choose from Destination or Current. Let's see what happens. And now you can see that my objects have taken on the speed of my airship. Now the animation isn't very interesting, it's very repetitive, so what I'm going to do is select my boxes and give them a gravity scale, a little different to each one. I'm going to set it between 1 and 2 very nicely, so there's some desynchronization going on. So maybe there's too much gravity, it goes a bit too fast, it's like boxes falling from the sky to put even less. Well that's not bad. And then I find that these boxes take too much account of the current speed of my airship. So I have this parameter, the initial velocity factor. And here you can see that there's a little displacement, but a lot less than before. Which is what I'm going to do too. So my animation is nice, but we can do better. Why can we do better? because we can use the water-like option to simulate air. Because the difference between air and water is just one of density. With my air object, I'll try to simulate a little drag and lift in my simulation. I'll select my air object and set it to static. Then I'll also display it. I'm going to take it and I'm going to activate water-like so if I press preview, what happens? And nothing much will happen. Why? Because my box objects don't collide with the A group, and I'd like it to collide with this air object. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to switch this air object to group C, and then I'll run my simulation again. You can already see that things are happening, and quite simply, you can see that my objects now there's a force pushing them to rotate. I'm going to cut the lift and perhaps increase drag. Let's see what happens. And here we have something quite funny. You can actually see my objects starting to waddle as if they were actually leaning on the air. Let's render 500 images. In a very simple way, I've been able to animate the falling objects, the teleportation, and instead of having a lot of objects, I've only got four layers which, as I go along, teleport, teleport and redo their animation. One, two, three, four. In this final section on teleportation, we're going to look at some tricks that can be important in certain scenes. Here, I'd like these bullets here, there are several of them. There are eight of them that are displayed as they fall into this pipe go through this portal, which is represented by a null object, reappear on this portal here, come back down this pipe, be teleported through this portal here to land in this one and fall. My tubes are represented by images here. They have masks on them so you can define the shape of each of these tubes. And now we're going to launch Newton. Newton asks if it should separate the masks on the objects but we don't want to separate them. So I'm going to select all my objects, well, my tubes by color already, and I'll start by increasing the precision of the meshes. It gives me a warning that there may be too many polygons, but it doesn't matter, and I'm going to select these objects and set them to static with the S key. Now I'm going to make these objects teleportable. Each time they pass through my portals, I also want them to retain their velocity and angular velocity. Now I'm going to configure my portals. 
So I want these portals to be static because they have to collide with my bullets. I want this portal to lead to this one and that this portal activated is brought to that one. These two portals have to be static. Well, let's see how it goes. So it's not bad. The problem is that my objects don't appear in the right direction. I'm also going to add a little more gravity to solve the problem of objects appearing in the wrong direction. My object here and here. Now it's working. I'm going to select my objects and I'm going to increase the friction to show you something that happens here. You've seen when objects are teleported, there's a moment when they actually break here. So what happens? I've reversed the orientation of my objects, the direction in which they're moving. They were going in this direction into this portal, and now they're coming out through here. But on the other hand, I haven't reversed the rotation. And that's the problem, is that when it enters here, you can see on this object that the rotation isn't in the right direction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this portal and ask it to reverse the direction of rotation when my objects pass through. As a result, I'll end up with this animation, which is much smoother. Let's render We're going to display my background. I'm going to take all these objects and do a pre-composition with them. I want to display the background and we'll see what happens. That's all there is to the teleportation function. Have fun with it. One, two, three, four.